Hello there nieces and nephews, this is Travels by Auntie Jenny. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing a river boat cruise that was a part of our big bus tour package. Hi everyone, this is Travels by Auntie Jenny and today we are in London. Close by is the Tower of London but, um, Tower Bridge. and Tower Bridge. Part of our ticket on the big bus tour was uh, you get to ride a one-way ride on the river. river the river boat ride. River Thames. River Thames. River Thames. <laughs> and our stop is Westminster. Yeah, so it, it starts from Tower of London to Westminster. Um, so we're on the top deck and down below, oh, La Bella got Starbucks. We had 30 minutes to kill, so I went to Starbucks. And I used up the entire 30 minutes because there was a long line. Mm -hmm. But if you don't get Starbucks, down below on the second deck, um, they do have a, a cafe where you can order um, drinks. And to the scan. Yeah. So if you want to order, you can do the scan, scan code and they'll bring it right up to you. Here we get to do some sightseeing by river uh, or river Thames. Um, we're going to see um, some of the big highlights of the city. So already we just saw a Tower of London. Mm -hmm. um, we're gonna do the Tower Bridge again, but London Eye. by river, uh, London Eye and some other spots. So stay tuned. It's another cool way to experience London. Mm -hmm. Chill, relaxing, enjoy the, the sights again. Yeah. And thank goodness for the really nice weather today. And also the big bus tour, I mean, it's it's actually a good price. What, what did we pay? Like thirty something. Thirty six thirty six pounds for an adult. For family, it was um, one hundred and eight. One hundred and one pounds. One so one hundred pounds for. Uh, no, that was including your ticket, right? No. For a one family of four, two adults and two children. Yeah, so it was one hundred and one um, for family. So two adults, two children. Um, and it includes both the red line, the blue line, and also the river Thames. In this video, I will be showing you the full tour with commentary and all of the river boat cruise along the river Thames. So if you have the time and you're still interested, continue watching this video. Today, we have to tell you that by law, and we've also got to tell you uh, what safety features we have on the boats. But uh, it's not to alarm you in any way, just to familiarise you with those safety features. We've got life rings on here, life rafts, and life jackets. Uh, the crew on this boat are all fully trained to deal with any emergency. If there is an emergency, which we hope there isn't, uh, just remain calm, seated and take instruction from the crew. We do have toilets downstairs, they're in the lower saloon, and also downstairs, there is a fully licensed bar. Now as we make our way up the river to Westminster, we're gonna pass by some very interesting places. What we like to do here on the Thames, as an old tradition, is point out these places of interest with a live commentary. We just wanna make sure that you're all happy for me to join you on the journey today. So just a show of hands if you're happy for this. Good. Everyone. Now it only comes in English, unfortunately. I don't speak multilingual, but I've learned over the years, if I speak a little bit slower, a little bit clearer, most of the people from overseas will understand the attractions we're talking about. So we're gonna be going the wrong way to start with. Don't be alarmed, we're not going down to Greenwich. 
The reason we're going to take you this way is because we're going to spin the boat very shortly and you're going to get a nice photo of the iconic Tower Bridge. Tower Bridge, shortly on the right. This was completed 1894 and designed by Sir John Wolfe Barry. I'm sure you're all aware on the boat, the bridge, well it can open up and it opens like a double-sided drawbridge. It takes 90 seconds to fully open. The bridge is open 364 days of the year. There is only one day that bridge, it doesn't open. Can anyone guess on this boat which day it could be? Christmas. Christmas day, very popular answer. Queen's birthday, that's very popular as well. You're gonna kick yourselves when I tell you the only day it doesn't open is the day of the London Marathon. There are 40,000 runners. They run across that bridge. And apparently, if we start to open it, well, it would spoil the race. So we leave it shut for the Marathon Day. Bridge. That's gonna work completely normal. The reason it has this decoration to it, it's so that it blends in with the Tower of London. That is also going to be on your right hand side very shortly. So that's why it's built in the Gothic style. It's called Tower Bridge Lift Times. Gives you an itinerary of all the lifts which are due. You can see on the right now what, what we just mentioned. Uh, this is the Tower of London here to the right. Originally built for William the Conqueror back in 1070. It's been a few things in this time. Uh, this has been a zoo, it's been a royal mint, an observatory, and a prison. Most famously known as a place of execution and torture. If you were found guilty of treason back in the day, you were rowed down the river from Parliament by a Thames waterman, just like myself and the captain, but you wouldn't have had the live commentary on the way down. You would have been taken into Traitor's Gate, which you see on the river wall, up to the White Tower with the four turrets, your head, it would have been chopped off. People to be executed in this way, Lady Jane Grey, William Wallace, better known as Braveheart, Guy Fawkes, Anne Boleyn, they've all been executed at the Tower of London. If you haven't been to the Tower before, will you make sure you go is absolutely steeped in history. If you cross the river to your left hand side, you can see in the river itself, there is a warship. This warship that you see, that's called the HMS Belfast. She was built in the same dockyard as the ill-fated Titanic, the Harland and Wolf dockyard. She last fired these guns in anger during the Korean campaign. All of those guns that you see would fire a 100 weight shell, 14 land miles. She was also known as a C-35 lightweight cruiser. So she will get up to speeds of around 25 knots. So very fast and very powerful during the Second World War. Today she's an extension now to the Imperial War Museum. You can go on if you want. There's nine decks to get through, all the way from the engine room to the wheelhouse. The Belfast on the left there. If you stand to your left hand side, look up to the skyline, you can see the tallest building in Western Europe. This is the Shard of Glass. The Shard of Glass stands just over 1,000 feet tall, and it was designed by a very famous Italian architect. His name was Renzo Piano. They offered Renzo one million pound for that design, but he did decline it. Instead, he wanted the top floor penthouse. Now he later sold that penthouse for the sum of 28 million pounds. A very clever businessman, Renzo Piano. We've got restaurants in the shop. You've got bars, a five-star Shangri-La hotel, 
and on the 72nd floor of the Shard, there is a viewing platform. On a clear day in London, you can see 40 miles in all directions from this viewing platform. Up to the left, the Shard of Glass. If you go to your right hand side, uh, very shortly, uh, in between the gaps of the buildings, which will be coming into view in about a couple minutes time, do look out for it, you can't see it at the moment, there is a stone column. Uh, the stone column, it has a golden candle on the top. When you see it, this is the monument to the Great Fire of London. If you was to lay this monument down on its side in a westerly direction, the same way which we're traveling, this is gonna fall on exactly where the fire started, which was in Pudding Lane. The bridge before this, the fourth one, it was sinking into the mud. So they took it down bit by bit, stone by stone. They sold it to an American man. His name was Robert McCulloch. What he done with the bridge is he shipped it over to the States. He had it rebuilt, Lake Havasu, Arizona. I know we've got a few Americans on this boat today. Has anyone seen the bridge, Lake Havasu, Arizona? No, not one person, but it is there. I do promise a tourist attraction in the States. If you go to your left hand side there, you can see a pirate ship in the dock, the St. Mary and Overy Dock. That is Sir Francis Drake's Golden Hind. He was the first Englishman to sail a ship around the world. The one in the dock there on the left, that's in fully working order. And that's been sailed twice around the globe. It's a museum today. You can go on there if you want. You can explore Drake's stories, which he created on the Golden Hind to the left. We're just gonna go through Cannon Street. This is Cannon Street Railway Bridge. As we pass through Cannon Street, just look around the butlers of the bridge. What you can see is the tide coming into London. The tide has been flooding into London for the last four hours. That means it's coming to London from the North Sea. It does rise around six and a half metres. Once the tide will turn, it will leave London on the ebb tide for seven hours. A rise and fall here on the Thames of anything between six and eight metres. If you look on the left as well, you can see just behind that branch there, a nice old pub in the corner. And that's the Anchor Tavern at Bankside, founded in 1615. That pub was used by William Shakespeare. He used to rehearse and get change in the attic of the pub before going to the Globe Theatre to perform. The Globe Theatre is here on your left hand side. Can you see the white circular building with the thatch roof on the top? That's where they reenact all of Shakespeare's plays. They do it how he would have done it in his era. So there is no stage lighting, there are no sound effects, all it is is their theatre and the voices itself. If you're willing to stand to go and watch a performance at the Globe, the tickets, they are unbelievably cheap. They're gonna <laughs> set you back just five pounds. Five pounds in London for live entertainment. I'm sure you'd all agree, it's great value for money. Shakespeare's Globe on the left there. If you go to your right hand side, a lot of people's favourite building in London. It's got the dome and the golden cross. This is Sir Christopher Wren's masterpiece, known as St Paul's Cathedral. St Paul's Cathedral stands at 365 feet tall. This is a very easy number to remember. One foot for every day of the year. You see the dome there at the cathedral? That is the second largest dome in Europe to stand on a building. The first one, it's at St. Peter's Vatican City in Rome. Look above that dome there, you can see the black metal railings with the people up there. That is a viewing platform. You can go up there and you can look over London. Mind you, 
and 27 steps. But the views, they are well worth the walk. If you haven't been to St Paul's Cathedral, you make sure you go, go to the painted gallery that's within the cathedral. Fantastic place to visit, St Paul's up to the right there. You can see in front of the boat here, we have the bridges coming into view. Now just before we get to the bridges, if you have a look up to your left hand side, see that nice shiny building there? This is number one Blackfriars. It's very expensive apartments. It was only finished about two years ago. There are two apartments for sale in that building as we speak for three million pound. The ground floor is for sale, but for 11 million pound, the penthouse is also for sale. That is at the top of the building. You can live there, 11 million pounds, number one, Blackfriars. It goes nicely with the bridges which are ahead of us here. These are the Blackfriars bridges. This first one that you see, this is a new development. It's the new railway bridge. They've done a lot of work to this. They've upgraded it. They have turned it into the first station to span the river. So that means the platforms, they are above us. If you travelled into London today by train, you might have gone underground or on the shore. But this one, right above the River Thames. It's all powered by solar panels and it's also been in a Mission Impossible film. Tom Cruise, he runs over that bridge. If you look in the middle of the bridges, see those red columns that are just standing there? Those are the original foundations for the first railway bridge, known as the Alexandra Railway Line. That's what the steam trains, they used to pass over. They took the top off, it become unsafe. Left the columns there in the middle as a memory to the bridge. The one we just gone through there, that is the road bridge at Blackfriars. And that does mark about halfway on our journey. Now is everyone enjoying the live commentary so far? Yeah, we're all happy. Yeah, happy. The sun will be out very shortly, I do promise. The sun will peer its head very shortly. We're going to carry on the tour here to your right hand side. You see the gothic looking building there, just behind the crane. This is called Zion College. This is where Her Majesty the Queen keeps her personal diaries. It's also where the Bible, it was printed on the Caxton Press by William Caxton. The first Bible, it was printed within Zion College. If you go back over to your left hand side, you can see the red building there with the letters O, X, O at the top. This is Stanford Wharf. It used to be a refrigeration warehouse. And it was also a power station for the post office. They used to manufacture the very famous OXO gravy cube in the building. No longer create it in the building today. They do it in Lancashire now, further up the country. The building there to the left, it has been transformed. There is a shopping centre at the bottom. In the middle, nice apartments. And at the top there, you see the glass front? That is the Harvey Nichols restaurant. That restaurant has been voted in the top five in London. Great views from the restaurant. If you come back over here to your right hand side, you can see it just coming into view now. Do look out for it on the right. There is a stone archway with Father Thames inscripted into it. This archway on the river wall here to the right, this is a barrier line between two cities. The city of London, which we're just about to leave. That's what the Romans founded. It's only one square mile. They called it London. We've left the city of London and we're going to be now entering the city of Westminster. You see the white strip there on the right? That is the HQS Wellington. Headquarters ship Wellington used to be a part of the New Zealand Navy. This was also used during the Second World War. Within here, three of the finest theatres in the world. The largest theatre is the Olivier one, 
and that was named after the actor and the founder Lawrence Olivia. National Theatre on the left. If you go over here to your right hand side, the building with the green dome on the top, it's Somerset House. Originally built for the Dukes and Elves of Somerset. Somerset House today is an art gallery. Now in the grounds of Somerset throughout the year, they use it for various things. Christmas time, they turn the grounds of Somerset into the largest ice ring in the UK. So a lot of things happen in the building on the right side. The bridge that you see in front of the boat, this is Waterloo Road Bridge. This bridge that you see, this is built in a very expensive stone. This is a Portland stone and it originates from Dorset. It's self-cleansing. When it rains in London, which is not very often, this bridge, it gets a thorough wash. If you compare the underneath to the face of it, the face of the bridge has a nice, clean look. The water penetrates the face of it. That stone is used on Buckingham Palace and also St Paul's Cathedral. We have the Savoy Hotel there to the right. The luxurious Savoy has the green tiles on the top. A five star here in London. If you do have your cameras to hand, which I know some of you have, we'll take a photo here of, on the right of London's oldest monument. You see that stone column there with the two guards at the bottom? That is Cleopatra's needle. This is the oldest thing you'll see in London today. It's over 3,500 years old. And this was given to London by a faithful Egyptian government for Nelson's victory over Napoleon and the French in the Battle of the Nile. There is a twin to this needle. It stands in Central Park. New York City. So you make sure you get a photo on the right there. We can see a station up to the right as well. That is Charing Cross Railway Station. The station is located in the West End of London. If you go behind that station, you can get to places such as Soho, Chinatown, West End as mentioned, Buckingham Palace. That's all to the shores there on your right hand side. But look in front of the boat, we do have the railway line and either side of it, you've got the two walkways. This is a known fact here on the River Thames. If you wave to the people on the first bridge, you get a wave back, you are guaranteed five years of good luck. So go on you lot, you wave like you never waved before, we get the retention, five years of good luck. If you didn't get a wave back from that bridge, there is another one this side. So keep waving, keep smiling as we go. You try and get that five years. Did you all get a wave back? You enjoy that five years. Good. If you look here to your left hand side, dominating the skyline there, that's the largest observation wheel in Europe. Uh, that is called the London Eye. The London Eye was put here for the year 2000, our millennium year. This was only meant to be here for two years. They were going to take it down and send it around the country. There is one reason why the London Eye is still here today. Can anyone guess on the boat which reason it could be? Yeah, possibly. I think someone said money. If you said money, you're correct. That makes so much money. Every single day in the summer, that will earn just shy of a half a million pounds. Every single day. You can see on the eye itself, the glass capsules, there are 32 of them. This represents the 32 boroughs we have in London. When you get to the top of that eye, 450 feet up, you can see all 32 boroughs. The reason it makes so much money is because it's been voted London's number one tourist attraction. Everyone that comes to London, they always have a go on the London Oil.
If you go to the right hand side here, we're going to talk about our last attraction now. Just in front of the boat, slightly to the right, you've got the palace, the palace of Westminster. This is the seat of our British government. We've got the House of Commons here and the House of Lords. If you look on top of the palace, you can see two towers. The one in the distance with the flag flying, that is called the Victorian Tower. And the other tower with the clock face, everyone calls it Big Ben. Us Londoners, we call it Big Ben. But the name <laughs> of that tower is called the Elizabeth Tower. The reason it has the name Big Ben, well it's a nickname for the 13 and a half ton bell housed with inside it. Strikes on the hour and the hour only. The other chimes you hear from the clock, they're called the Westminster chimes. Quarter past, half past and quarter two. But on the hour, that is known as Big Ben. If you wanna to go to Westminster Abbey today, you just leave the boat here walk up the shore just a little bit you come to the abbey go past the houses of parliament go and visit the abbey that's where we have all the coronations for the kings and queens that lead this country there is lots of things to do here at westminster definitely get off go and have a look around we're going to be going into this pier here on the right now this is westminster pier it's very important that we get you off this boat as safely as possible so just take a seat hold on to the handrails as we go into the pier we might have a little bump we don't want anyone getting hurt we're going to be going to the london eye next and then we make our way down the river we have boats all day today for this company every 40 minutes until just after 7 p.m the ceiling plenty of time to go and have a look at you'd like to show just a little token by placing whatever you feel into our captain's silver champagne tip bucket it will be on the exit gate as you leave looks like this just exited off the boat how did you how did you like it i actually really enjoyed it, it yeah was nice. the, the tour guide was really um informative funny um, a lot of good information and it was a nice pleasant ride it's funny though i didn't realize that a lot of the uh the the sites that we wanted to see were all along the thames river yeah. thames or thames but um, it was it was a really good there. It was a really good tour. Yes. I do recommend, recommend. it. Recommend. Don't skip it. It's easy to skip it, especially if you're doing the bus tour. Make sure you make time to ride the the boat ride. You can to the and then turn this way. Yay! One and, bye.